Now that you've found what to say, let's discover ways of going from the what to the how by figuring out your voice, your research, ways to find a dramatic premise and how to go from the original genius idea, which I know you all have, to finally start putting pen to paper. How you're going to tell your story is linked to what people call your voice. But, but what's my voice? Okay, okay, let me help you again with the anguish of not being original enough. Your voice is something you shouldn't be worrying about. Your voice is what gives your work style. But that's something for the producers to worry so that they can sell you and your work. And also for an audience to distinguish your films amongst thousands that are made every month. In film school, they'll tell you to find your voice. But in my humble opinion, that should come natural to you. It's who you are, and that's going to transpire through your writing. Of course, there are ways that you can work on it, by having a distinct approach to a subject matter, or a stylized dialogue, or even visuals. But if you try too hard to have a distinct voice and a distinct style, you can end up being pretentious. And as Francis Ford Coppola once said, Nothing is so terrible as a pretentious movie. I mean, a movie that aspires for something really terrific and doesn't pull it off is shit, it's scum. And everyone will walk on it as such. And that's why poor filmmakers, in a way, that's their greatest horror, is to be pretentious. Oh, uh, c'est deep, not pretentious, you peasants. Yeah, don't be pretentious. Instead, let your own taste, your own culture, language, life experience and identity dictate your voice and who you are as a writer-director. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Think of it like this. When you're young, the things you like and say are not fully yours. You're just regurgitating something you've heard somewhere else, and because you haven't read, watched, or heard many things about it, it can sound very cliché. Everyone's always saying, seize the moment. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking it's the other way around. You know, like, the moment seizes us. But as you grow old and start reading, listening, watching different opinions, you start creating a more complex and unique point of view. It is the same with your voice. Tip, think to yourself, can anyone else make this film? Or is this a film only I can make? If you can answer yes to that final question, you're either lying or you truly found your voice. And I know your crippling anxiety is trying to make you doubt yourself. We all go through that. But trust yourself and the story you want to tell. If you do that, hopefully somebody else along the line will too. Exercise. Think about the places you have lived or visited. Where did you grow up and how did they shape you? Where have you chosen to live as an adult and why? What makes a place feel like home? And what places do you long to explore? Think about the big events in your life. Write about what you learned from those experiences and how they impacted you. How do they affect your current viewpoint on life? Think about your values and belief system. What is meaningful to you? What do you feel is the purpose of life? How might your worldview influence the stories you want to tell? Tell a story worth telling. As a kid, I thought cinema would be my way of changing the world. Although I still believe that films can be an excellent platform to affect social change and bring awareness to certain issues, I don't think all films need to do that in order to be good. A teacher of mine once advised film students to ask themselves, what does society need? And then you gotta fill that gap with your voice. Oh, what a load of crap. Well, we finally agree. That is one big pile of shit. Tip, don't listen to everybody. Yes, that includes me. Just because an older person who calls himself an expert says something with confidence, it doesn't mean it's true. stories since before we learned how to shave ourselves. Our hairy ancestors used to gather around the fire and share stories, at least we think so. What kind of stories were these? We can only speculate they probably were a mix of their day-to-day -day problems, like their bad harvest, with a lot of imagination added onto them, like envisioning angry gods in the sky punishing them with a bad harvest. Well, again, inspiration mixed with imagination. The end. Not. Because at their core, stories are our attempt to understand ourselves and our place in society, where we come from and where we're going, to open our minds and hearts to new ways of thinking and feeling, to discover what we have in common with others, etc. Now that we have much less hair, we replace the fire with the cinemas. 
and unfortunately also our laptops and even phones. But the core of the stories remains. Someone at work ate my sandwich. Even when we're simply telling something that happened to our friends, we're actually dramatizing it. This is something we do since a young age. We slightly alter real personal events to make them more dramatic and interesting, maybe even sometimes without realizing. Almost as when telling a joke, we structure our stories with a setup and then a payoff. Cause and effect. That sandwich was the only good thing going on in my life. Someone ate the only good thing going on in my life. Just like our ancestors found their own creative ways to give a reason for their bad harvest, we also still use stories as a way to create some order from the chaotic and random events of our world. But I don't get it. How do we know if a story is really worth telling? Well, even the act of questioning that will freeze you sometimes and make you not write anything because you don't think it's worth it. What I've decided to do is to accept that every story is worth telling, as long as I'm passionate about it and it comes from a very personal and truthful place. And by passionate, I mean it won't go away. Sometimes you have an idea you think it's cool, but then the next day it fades away. Good ones tend to stay. If they stay around and they are very personal to me, then I can confidently say that they are a story worth telling. Well, maybe not that confidently, but hoping. Fingers crossed. It will take you a long ass time to go from idea to finished film. So you might as well just choose something that you're interested to talk about. If you manage to change the world with it, even better. But perhaps that shouldn't be your starting point. Exercise. If you have nephews, nieces, young cousins or even kids, try telling them a fairy tale. From it you'll be able to extrapolate something that is in your mind. Whether it is something you struggle with, something you question, it's there, unconsciously, and it should come out from the story. I do this very often with my partner and it usually tends to be stuff that we're struggling to deal with as a couple that is the underbelly of the fairy tales that I tell her. It's almost like a way of communicating harsh topics in an easier way and it's a great tool to understand storytelling, structure, setup and payoff and many other things. Finding a dramatic premise. Remember that what you want to say is your theme. But you can't make a whole film just out of theme. It's not an essay or a dissertation. You have used your observation to be inspired. Now it's time to use your imagination to dramatize what you want to say into something audiences want to watch. That's why figuring out the dramatic premise is so important at this stage. Because the premise is actually the foundation of the film. It's what the story is about in a simple way. And it will be a very active tool, not just for pitching and marketing, but also for the actual writing process. Because filmmaking is basically making up lies to tell the truth. Welcome to Jurassic Park. What do you think Jurassic Park is about? Cool dinosaurs? An awesome action suspense film? Hold on to your butts. On its core, it's actually about past versus future. Are we going forwards or backwards? About nature versus technology? About we having no control over life? about the consequences of the advancement of science and the ethical questions that come with it. There's actually a lot there that is hidden in the cool film about dinosaurs. We naive student filmmakers initially make the theme too obvious, because it's the first thing that we want to talk about. Yet we have to continuously find ways to embed it subtly in the story. For example, Paul Schrader, the writer of Taxi Driver, talks about looking for a metaphor when you find what you want to explore. A metaphor is the stand-in. It is not the problem itself. The metaphor for a lonely boy is not a lonely boy. The metaphor for an unattractive girl is not an unattractive girl. It's like two wires. You have the problem and the metaphor. And they have to get close enough for a spark to jump across. And if they're too far apart, there'll be no spark. And if they're on top of each other, there'll be no spark. So you have to tease them. Why am I listening to Paul Schrader? I thought this series is called Everything You Learn in Film School. Well, because in class, they will also do that to you sometimes. Once, I was even shown a video from Every Frame a Painting. Awesome! Wow! Anyways, finding your story theme should be a straightforward process, as it is the thing that prompts you to start writing in the first place. Remember that the film and its theme is in some way a representation of how you see the world. It's your unique point of view on the subject you are talking about. Exercise. Grab the favorite scene of the film that you're writing or that you want to start to write, look at it and analyze what you're actually saying in it. Because this can be a great clue to why you wanted to write it in the first place, thus helping you understanding what your theme is. So now you have to incorporate the theme you want to explore into the premise by dramatizing the setup. Theme doesn't have to be in every scene, but if it's subtly imbued in the dramatic premise, then it will unconsciously come out when you start writing, becoming perhaps inherent to the DNA of every scene. Talking about DNA, in Jurassic Park the theme is present in the premise, and so it follows the story around. One of the thematic questions they explore is, 
Should scientists play God and try to control nature? That is inherent to the story of a millionaire who brings back dinosaurs to life and creates an amusement park with them. I'm sure this was present somewhere in the beginning of the writing. So think of a thematic question that you'd be interested to explore. Something that you must ask in your film and answer it by the end. The best questions tend to lay on a morally grey area without a right or wrong answer. Just like with everything in life. But the exploration of the question itself will be already interesting enough for a film. The thing about storytelling is that it actually ends up changing not only the person it's being told to, but also the storyteller. Because in a way, story is a metaphor for life and characters are a metaphor for human beings. Well, of course I know him. He's me. Like we've been saying, as a writer, you almost go on the same journey as your character, from all the research and the work that you undertake when exploring the story. What usually happens after all this research is that you end up looking at the world in a different way. Especially if you can't find the right answer to your question. Because again, it's not about the destination. I finally found it! After 15 years! The scroll of truth! And if you allow yourself to go on this journey within, you might be able to come up with an emotional truth to share with the world that is unique and interesting. Yeah! It's important to understand that this ambiguity in the thematic question is perfect to have conflict within your story and your characters. This will not only influence directly your protagonist's arc, but also your antagonist's. Oh, come on, you're saying we need a villain? But there's no villains in life, huh? No, 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 you don't need a villain. You need people with opposing views, that's all. And if you're not surrounding yourself with those in your life, then you're probably doing something wrong. Think of it like this. Let's say the thematic question is, should we fight for ourselves or for our community? Then your main characters, no matter what you want to call them, they should have strong opposing answers to that question with interesting and compelling reasons for believing in them, just like we all have. And if you manage to make them both right in their own way, then you've got a pretty interesting dynamic between the two. And throughout the whole film, one will teach something to the other, as they kind of complete and make each other be better. Or maybe one of them will be more resistant to changing, and won't change. But that dynamic is always interesting to watch, no matter what you call one or the other. Exercise! Write down your film's theme into one basic question and then write it down onto a sticker note and keep it in front of you as you keep writing your story. We were told to do that, so hope it helps. In summary, I believe that being able to incorporate your theme into the dramatic premise can be what distinguishes a good film from a great film, but it doesn't mean it will come straight away to you. It can come a bit later in the process, even as you write. No, 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 you must have it before. Uh, not necessarily. Okay, okay, remember, there are no rules. Everything is pretty much like guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. So don't feel pressured to have the big theme of your film before you start writing, even though I just gave you that exercise. I think you must still have the general idea, the why you are writing it. But even that can be found later. Some people will be drawn unconsciously to a certain subject matter. And only then, as they write, they will figure out why they were truly drawn to those themes. Exercise. Choose three directors whose work you admire. Think of your favorite films by each director and identify the themes in each one. Does a pattern emerge? So basically, don't worry too much right now if it's the right thematic question or not. Just start writing with what you think is the theme that you want to explore. And then if it takes you somewhere else, just allow it. <laughs> <laughs>